Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you how to make divinity fudge. This is an old-fashioned candy fudge that my grandmother taught me how to make years and years ago. So we hope that you enjoy this divinity fudge. We often make it here at uh, Christmas time or for the holidays. Uh, there's no reason why you can't make it any other time, but that seems to be when we enjoy it the most. So let's see what we need to get started. Right, we're going to start out with two and a fourth cups of sugar. This is granulated white sugar. And we have two room temperature egg whites. We have a half a cup of water and a half a cup of corn syrup. We also have uh, just a pinch of salt. And we have a cup of chopped pecans. And we have a teaspoon of vanilla. And one other thing you're gonna want is a candy thermometer. And what we're gonna try to achieve today is a fudge or, or soft ball stage. So that's 116 degrees Celsius or around 238 to 240 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna turn our uh, big pot, we're gonna do quite a big pot on high. And we're gonna combine our sugar and our water and our corn syrup. So just these three ingredients to begin with. Then we'll give it a stir and let it come to a boil while we stir it. And then we'll turn it down and let it simmer. Okay, we've combined our sugar, water, and corn syrup. We're gonna let this come to a boil. I have it on about a medium high. And as it comes to a boil, we stir it constantly. This is one of those recipes where it's okay if you have a friend that can help you stir because there's a lot of stirring involved. Um, so we're going to let this uh, come all the way to a boil and then we'll reduce the temperature and let it uh, cook a little longer until it reaches the soft ball stage. Okay, in between stirring your sugar and corn syrup, we are going to start our egg whites in our mixer here. So we have our beater attachment and we're going to put two room temperature egg whites. Um, we're going to put those in our mixer along with a pinch of salt or about an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. We're going to get this uh, locked in and start mixing it until the egg whites become foamy. While the egg whites are getting beaten, I have seen that this has come to a boil. We're going to continue to stir it, but I've turned it down and we're going to let this simmer on um, a low, or if you have numbers on your stove, it's around a three. It's a good time to go ahead and put in your thermometer. You don't want the ball of the thermometer resting on the bottom of the pan, but you do want it immersed in the liquid. So we are going to cook this until our, you can see our little blue line goes all the way up here to our softball stage. All right, our sugar mixture is coming on up. It's almost to that softball stage. It just needs to go right to there. So it's okay, coming let's along. Let's check our egg whites. There we go. Those are stiff peaks. You can tell because the peaks stand up on their own. And we're going to use this with our sugar mixture in just a few minutes. All right, we're getting closer to that softball stage. And I'm going to keep my camera over here on this side of the rim because I was making caramel one time and dropped my phone in the caramel and it did not recover from the hot caramel bath. Um, so I have to be cautious when I'm uh, doing close-ups of hot food. Hey guys, so we're just waiting the last few minutes for our sugar mixture to come to temperature around 238 to 240 degrees Fahrenheit or softball stage. The egg whites are ready. We're gonna turn it on low and very slowly pour that very hot mixture in here. So I'm probably gonna put that on time lapse because this will be loud and it's a very slow pouring process. Once that mixture is completely poured, then I'll come back and tell you what we do with our next steps. So we've added our hot mixture to the egg whites. And we're gonna let this stir up until it starts uh, forming a softer peak. And then we'll add in our pecans and our vanilla. So this is still really soupy looking right now. It's got to uh, come back down to temperature and form some softer peaks first. All right, so I wanted to show you what the mixture looked like right now when it comes off the spoon. 
you can see that it's still just folding into ribbons and melting into itself. So we don't want that. We want it to kind of form a little bit of a softer peak and not melt right into itself. We're gonna let it keep going and mix for another about five minutes or so and see if that, we're gonna see if this is starting to form any kind of a small peak. And it's not yet. And you can see it's still very glossy. So to eyeball this, what you're looking for is it to just start to lose its gloss. That's usually when it starts forming that soft peak. Right, one of the other tricks that you can do to see if it's starting to get done yet is to do the spoon. Um, again, if it kind of holds its shape on the spoon, then it's starting to get that soft stage. And this one is starting to hold pretty good. So you can kind of see where it's, it's keeping the line, the shape of the line, it's not melting in. So we're gonna go ahead at this time and stir in our vanilla and our nuts. All right, so we're gonna start with our vanilla. I'm gonna stir this in. That was a teaspoon and a cup of chopped pecans. I'm gonna stir this in as well. And we are just about ready to take it over to our wax paper. This is the very last stage before you take it to the wax paper. And I also recommend getting out two spoons, two teaspoons, because I use two spoons to dip this onto the wax paper to make our candy. So this looks really good. It's a really nice consistency. As you can see, it's, it's taking a longer time to fall. It's not just ribbons anymore. And it's also not quite as glossy anymore. It still has a little bit of a shine, but it's gonna start losing that pretty quickly as we get it out of the bowl. All right, so we have our Divinity Fudge. This is, it should uh, be pretty stiff. This one's pretty stiff, so we're gonna go ahead and spoon it onto our paper here. This is our waxed paper. And I like to make just little teaspoon mounds, and I use two spoons so I can easily uh, get it off of the spoon from the other spoon. So I'm just gonna set these out. These usually dry overnight. And I'm gonna let them dry for a little bit. Sometimes I'll turn them over the next day and let them dry a little bit more before I put them in a, a tin or something like that. So this is an uh, example of a little Christmas tin I have. And we're going to use that to put our candies in after they dry. So this is a Divinity. And one of the tricks, if your divinity does not want to set up, mine uh, doesn't like to set up if it's raining outside, you can absolutely forget it. Um, the moisture level in the air just does not whip enough air into the warm sugar candy mixture. So make sure you do it on a dry day. And you can also, um, you just have to have patience. You have to beat this in the mixer for anywhere from five to 20 minutes to get it to really set up. And if it's not setting up by then, and your mixer is still working, then go ahead and add a half tablespoon of powdered sugar. Um, let it rest for about 15 minutes and then try to mix it again. And just add a half teaspoon or half tablespoon of powdered sugar at a time until it starts to set up. So as you can see, these are setting up really nicely um, and have still kind of a glossy, shine to them, but not as glossy as when it was first being made. So that is our homemade divinity. We hope you give it a try. You can also pour it out into a nine by 13 pan. I recommend the wax paper underneath it because it can get very, very sticky. Um, so if you do that, it takes a little bit longer to set. If you wanna pour it out in a pan, you can do that. But we like to make these little candies kind of bite size. Um, so yeah, there it is. All right, there's our Divinity Fudge. We got quite a few pieces. This is a uh, double batch, or two batches of the fudge. So you can see it does make quite a bit of the candies. Again, you can put this in a nine by 13 pan and then slice it when it's dry and make it into squares, or you can drop it like we did with the teaspoons. All right, you guys, we have made our Divinity Fudge. It looks terrific. It's gonna dry, um, it dries pretty quickly, actually. It's not even uh, wet anymore, but we're gonna let it dry overnight, and then we're gonna flip it over and let it dry a little bit more. Um, but this looks terrific. So 
Uh, you can still see it's a little bit sticky. Don't want to quite come off the paper yet, but by tomorrow it will. And it smells like a vanilla fudge, um, and it looks kind of like a meringue. Now you can also, if you're in Europe, you can use um, golden syrup instead of corn syrup. And I believe uh, from what I've read that that might make a good substitute. Um, and just remember that uh, it's a very tricky science. It doesn't always come out right the first time or the second time or the third time. Weather is a big factor of this. The humidity in the air is a big factor. And it's pretty difficult to make a batch of Divinity um, perfect the first time through. So we've made this every year uh, at Christmas time. And we look forward uh, to having you try out our recipe as well. And hopefully you'll enjoy Divinity Fudge as much as we do. So thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Evan's going to spell the word lit. How do you spell it, Evan? Good job, bud. Now it's going to try the divinity fudge. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Mm. Mm. How That's is it? Good. Does it taste mm. like a marshmallow? Kind of. This is really good. I definitely recommend it if you want to try it.